Welcome to In the Middle, a podcast on Christianity in the Middle East, where we explore questions of history, religion, culture, and policy that affects the ancient and indigenous Christian communities of the Middle East. On January 31st, 2024, at the fourth annual International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, D.C., I had the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Anil Abdoka, Minister of Transportation and Communication in the Kurdistan Regional Government in Northern Iraq. As the only Christian member of the KRG cabinet, Mr. Abdoka provides a very unique and enlightening perspective on the situation of Christians in Iraq a decade following the ISIS genocide. How has the situation of Christians in northern Iraq changed over the past decade, and what is their current situation? So without further ado, thanks for joining the conversation, and welcome to In the Middle. Anu, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure. Um, you're here, of course, at the International Religious Freedom Summit, uh, here representing, of course, you know, the, the, the Kurdistan Regional Government in Iraq, and we're, uh, we're blessed to have you. Uh, what our viewers would, would be um, interested to know is you are a Christian uh, uh, working uh, as a minister in the KRG government, uh, so we really look forward to today's conversation. But first, before we get started, I'd love to hear about you, Anu. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, what you're doing, and what your background is. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Shlam al Lochen. How you mock on Bricha? Basima Taudi. Yomo Bricho. Taudi Sagi. Of course, uh, I am from Kurdistan, uh, Kurdistan region of Iraq, uh, Mesopotamia, or Beth Nahrin. Uh, originally, I am from uh, one of the largest Chaldean uh, cities in. Uh, uh, Kurdistan region and Iraq, uh, Ankawa. Uh, I was born and raised in, in Ankawa, in Erbil, uh, now the uh, capital city of Kurdistan region. Uh, my mother is, uh, my mother's family, they are from Al Qosh. Their house is near to the shrine of Prophet Nahom, uh, 3,000 years old. Uh, uh, shrine uh, near to the uh, uh, monastery of Saint Hermas. Yep. Uh, it's like 1,400 years old monastery. And also, of course, my from my f- father's side, we are originally from Ankawa. My grandfather's house is near to the uh, uh, church of Saint Georges uh, that was renovated in the sixth uh, century of Christianity. That's amazing. And for the, the sake of our viewers, uh, Al Khosh is, is uh, one of the major villages, one of the major towns in the Ninwa Plain. Yes. As you mentioned, it's uh, surrounded by a plethora, um, of very many historical um, sites, monasteries, biblical. biblical sites, not yes. just historical indeed. Yeah. And that is characteristic of the Ninwa Plain in general, yes. in northern Iraq, northern Syria, southeast Turkey, Beth Nahrin, as you, uh, as you said, Mesopotamia, um, is steeped with our history, the history of the Mesopotamian people, the Syriacs, Assyrians, Chaldeans. Um, and that's why, um, that's why it's so important to have a guy like you here to talk to us about the region, what's happening, uh, what happened historically, and where mm-hmm. our people stand today. So if you could tell us a bit about your current work. We, we, know, yes. uh, uh, we know, of course, what, what your official title is, as we shared with our audience. But if you tell us a bit about what you're doing uh, in government, what some of the plans are, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and how it's looking for our people. Yes. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we, uh, before the elections, last election in uh, 2018, uh, we formed the largest uh, Chaldean uh, and uh, uh, Syriac and Assyrian uh, uh, coalition. Uh, that uh, as a result of the election, we got three out of five uh, seats uh, of the Chaldean, Assyrian, and Syriacs. Uh, and also uh, we had the, uh, and, uh, the vote uh, and the support of the Armenian representative of the parliament. Uh, so I was elected as the representative of Christians in the new cabinet led by His Excellency Prime Minister Masur Barzani uh, as the ninth cabinet of Kurdistan region government. Uh, as a Minister of Transportation and Communication, I do my duty uh, to serve the uh, people uh, of Kurdistan region uh, in general uh, in the fields of transportation and communication. Uh, as a representative of Christians, uh, all the Christians without any uh, uh, differentiation or like on the uh, churches or the denominations or 
the naming issue because we are we consider all of us one nation absolutely and one people either we are Chaldeans or Assyrians or Syriacs or Armenian mm -hmm. so uh, I try my best uh, to be a representative uh, for my people and uh, in this cabinet uh, we have the full support of the Prime Minister and the office of the Prime Minister that's excellent and uh, I just spoke um, I just spoke a moment ago with uh, a colleague of yours, Mr. Kaldo Ramsey, who is the, the Director General of the Directorate of Syriac Heritage, uh, Culture and Arts, uh, also in the KRG. And hearing from him, uh, it was quite encouraging um, to learn of the initiatives undertaken by the KRG. And just the fact alone that there is a directorate of the name that it is, the Syriac Culture and Arts uh, Directorate, is quite promising and in meeting a person like you who has given who has frankly been given a very high position a ministerial position in the krg is very encouraging to me what i would like to to discuss a little bit with you if you could share a bit with our our audience is sort of i think we know the the the, the ancient history of our people the christians in iraq but if you could speak specifically the history of our people uh, over the last say decade what they've been through um, the hardships they've suffered, how they've been able to rebound and recover to the extent that they have anyhow, and what their situation today is um, in 2024. As you know, uh, after 2003, our people suffered a lot. Before 2003, we had like approximately 2 million Christians living in Iraq. In 2004, and starting of the, 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 the vacuum of power, the vacuum of security, in Iraq, 111 of our churches were attacked. In Mosul, in Baghdad, in Basra, in the middle and the south of the country. More than 1,300 Christians were killed. Our bishops were killed, Bishop Marpolis Farajraho, the Chaldean Bishop of Mosul, was kidnapped and killed by Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. Our priests were killed. Uh, Father Raghid Kani and his four deacon friends, where they were executed in public in Mosul. Many of our clergymen were kidnapped, tortured. Uh, our girls were harassed in universities and high schools. So people fleed. Thousands of our properties were taken by some gangs in Baghdad and in other places. So in 2004, President Masoud Barzani, president of uh, Kurdistan region, declared that Kurdistan region it uh, has opened its doors always to Christians, to Yazidis, to Kakais, and to, to all the minorities or components of Iraq. So there was a, a wave of our people coming from all sides of Iraq to Kurdistan region. Others fleed, fleed to the United States, to Canada, to Europe, and to, other, to Australia, to other countries. And, of course, uh, a significant number also remained in Nineveh Plain. So in Kurdistan, uh, people started uh, their businesses. Some of them, they became employees in the, uh, in the go government institutions, uh, and they settled in Kurdistan region. Um, let, let me give you a, 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 an example. In Kawa, in 2003, it was only 30,000, 28,000, 30,000 people. Now, it's 86,000 people. We had only three churches. Now we have 16 churches wow. and monasteries, many other monasteries. So uh, in Kurdistan region, it's, there's not only a chance for Christianity to, to exist, but Christianity in Kurdistan region is flourishing. Right. What happened in Nineveh Plain was the 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 the, uh, the satanic the, the 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 evil war uh, waged by ISIS against the Yazidis, against the Christians, against 
all the components of Iraq and also of Kurdistan region. So our people, they flee another time from our historic territories in Nineveh Plain. You know, we are the descendants of Babylon, Assyria, Somar, and Akkad. Those are our territories for 70,000 years and until now. We speak the same language that Jesus Christ spoke and we preserve it. So those people came to Kurdistan region. In Kurdistan region, by the direct support of His Excellency, the Prime Minister, now we have the General Directorate uh, of the uh, Syriac language. Yep. So we have up to approximately 60 public schools of Syriac language. Our uh, children, they can read, write, and learn in, by Syriac language. You met uh, my colleague, Caldo. Yep. We have a general directorate for the culture and Syriac art. Mm -hmm. We have a museum for the Syriac heritage. We have a library of uh, Syriac culture. And also, uh, 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 we have the uh, a group for the uh, national and uh, heritage dances and clothes, customs. And so okay. we are working. And of course, uh, we have a very famous and historic decision by His Excellency the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Barzani, by granting Ankawa as the largest Christian city a semi-autonomous uh, administrative status. That's amazing. And uh, I think you put it very well when you said that Christianity in, in Kurdistan, Kurdistan region of Iraq, Ankawa, is not only surviving, but it's flourishing. And I think that's objectively observable. I mean, even we in the West, when we, when we look, we don't have to dig very deep to find out that this is the fact. Um, I must ask, however, and in full, full uh, disclosure and candor, as the Syriac people, that includes Assyrians and Chaldeans, as the Syriac Christians of Iraq and of the region, Syria, Turkey as well, we are not without, uh, let's call, historical memory. Yes. This historical memory is formed in large part, among other things, but in large part by the SAFO, the events of the SAFO genocide in 1915. Uh, for those watching, SAFO is the Ottoman perpetrated genocide against Christians. That's Armenians, Syriacs, Assyrians, Chaldeans, Greeks. Uh, in the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Part of that, of course, was the participation of Kurdish tribes uh, in the Ottoman Empire. Um, now, as we see today in the KRG, and even in Northeast Syria, um, the, the Syrian Democratic Council is majority Kurdish, um, uh, although the leadership is diverse. But the psychological hurdle that is formed within the minds of our people as a result of historical memory. Oftentimes, um, it's good in some way in that it provides a lesson, it provides caution, it provides um, um, context through which to navigate life and decisions. But in many cases, it can also be a hurdle that, that uh, inhibits progress. Um, and again, observing all that we see happening that's positive within the KRG is encouraging. But how is it that our people can overcome that psychological hurdle uh, in the name of progress? Of course, uh, any nation, any people without history, without remembering their history, they cannot secure their future. Uh, our people suffered a lot in the time of Saifo, 1915, in the time of Surya, 1969, in the time of Simele, 19, 1933, uh, and in the time until you reach the Sayyidat al-Najat and uh, ISIS uh, massacre and genocide against our people. Um, of course, in the time of the Ottomans, when the, uh, the Saifo happened, there were, of course, uh, some tribes of Arab tribes and also Kurdish tribes uh, participated as they were agents of that uh, state that was in control. We don't blame Turkey today for what the Ottoman did. We don't blame, we cannot blame KRG for what of the some tribes did 100 years ago in Turkey yeah. or in that time the, the Ottomans. Yeah. We don't blame uh, uh, the Germans for what Hitler did. 
we don't blame the Americans for what their ancestors did to the uh, to the Indians, the original people of, of of the United States. We don't blame the Australians for what their ancestors did to the Australians, the the the, 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 the original Australians, the tribes over there. So what happened was that some of the people of, of the tribes were expelled. Like if we have in the Kurdish tribes, like something like someone like Simko Shkak who killed the, uh, the, the Assyrian, Asia. his patriarch yeah. Mar, Mar Binyamin Shum'un, Sahada Qaddisha Mar Binyamin Shum'un. Sloth Amman. Uh, Sloth Amman. Also, we have in the Kurds, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad Barzani, the Khudan. We have Sheikh Abdul Salam Barzani. Those people who protected Christians, mm -hmm. protected Azidis, Jews. In Barzan territory, in Barzan territory, in Barzan village, there was a mosque, a church, and a synagogue beside each other yeah. for, for, for hundreds of years. At that time, 100 years ago, before the, 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 the formation of the League of Nations and the, or the United Nations or the, 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 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Barzan, according to the, to the teachings of Sheikh Abdul Salam and Sheikh Ahmed Barzani, mm -hmm. the Khudan, Christians, Azidis, and uh, Muslims and Jews were equal. Uh, the rights were given to women. The, 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 it was forbidden to cut green trees and kill uh, uh, wild animals. Mm -hmm. And the, the ownership of lands was, was the ownership of all the people. Yeah. So yeah. these teachings were there in Kurdistan. So you cannot generalize. Because of that, because of that, our people, Chaldeans, Assyrians, Syriacs, and Armenians participated and supported Mala Mustafa Barzani 70... Uh, Eight years, eight years, approximately eight years mm -hmm. from now, in all of the uh, and his his brothers, in all of the uh, revolutions of Barzan, the first revolution, the second revolution, and in 1961 the Ailul revolution, leaders of the revolution were Christians, yeah. like Hormuz Malik Chakko, like François Hariri, and others. Uh, so our people participated in the revolution, in the uprising in 1991, and we have uh, a, a, a significant number of matrids who fought with the Peshmerga, they were Peshmerga, fought with the Peshmerga for the freedom of Kurdistan. So what we have today in Kurdistan, it's not given to us. It's our right, we earn it by our blood, by fighting uh, beside our Kurdish, Arabs, and other components of Kurdistan, Turkmans and others. Amen. Thank you for that. That was a very good explanation. I like the analogy that you drew for the viewers where we don't necessarily hold Germany of today accountable for the sins of Hitler or any other atrocities. Um, we, don't, we don't hold uh, any atrocities today for the governments that, that are in control of those happen to be same territories. So I think that's a, a very good analogy. And I think you can, you can tell a tree by its fruits. Right. If the KRG was giving poison, poisonous fruits, yeah. then I think we'd have a case to make. Yeah. But I, I see the fruits uh, uh, coming from the KRG to be um, beneficial and productive uh, for our people. Me, Please. Yeah. And telling uh, a tree by its fruits, yeah. let me tell you something that happened to me personally. Please. In Baghdad, uh, the government, the president of, 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 uh, of Iraq signed a law legalized by the Iraqi parliament to prohibit production, exporting, importing, and selling alcohol. Mm. So that's against the freedom yeah. of Christians, of Yazidis, of, 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 of non-Muslims, even uh, uh, against the freedom of many Muslims who drink alcohol. Right. So I was very upset. I took the, the, uh, uh, this law legalized by Iraq to the Council of Ministers in Kurdistan, and I wanted to say that this is, we, that cannot be uh, 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 legalized also in Kurdistan. Mm -hmm. So when I spoke about it in the Council of Ministers, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Barzani, uh, he told me, stop, this is against the rights of Christians and other minorities or components, they don't say minorities, components, this will not fly in Kurdistan. So you didn't have to make the case. He made yes, the case. Yeah, he made the case. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's he very good. It's very interesting, too. Um, so as you know, 
former Vice President Mike Pence is here at the IRF Summit. Yes. He spoke just earlier this afternoon. And um, um, as you also may know, he made a priority of the Trump Pence administration, the last administration, uh, to make religious minorities, or components as you call them, a priority for U.S. foreign policy. And part of that was, of course, Christians in Iraq. One question I have for you is, over the last 10 years, how have you seen um, the work of USAID uh, happening in the Kurdistan region, and how have you seen it impacting, for better or worse, or lacking, uh, uh, lacking you know, full benefit for our community in, in northern Iraq? Uh, th they are doing their best, but what really need we need as Christians uh, in Kurdistan region and in Nineveh Plain is uh, first of all housing projects for our for young couples in order to to our people to have uh, uh, a chance to live and to get a house and also supporting small projects uh, for small businesses. Uh, for our uh, uh, young generation. I think they must focus on that. In, in Kawa now, uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister uh, approved a housing project for 1,000 apartments for young couples, Christian young couples in Inkawa, all of them Christians. And uh, also we are working about something similar also in Duhok territory. What we need uh, for our uh, American friends to help us with is to normalize the situation in Nineveh Plain and in Sinjar uh, by uh, pressuring the Iraqi government, all the parties in Iraq, to implement the Treaty of Sinjar. Uh, by, uh, by implementing the Treaty of Sinjar, by, get by getting rid of the militias uh, over there, we can restore the rule of the law and our Christians can feel safe and return to their historic lands. Thank you for that. And we'll continue to pray. We'll continue to work here in the United States. That's the, the mission of IDC in defense of Christians. We were founded in 2014 directly in response to the ISIS caliphate uh, taking over in northern Iraq and northeast Syria. And since then, we've been working on that issue and many others in the region. And we'll continue to pray. We'll continue to work uh, diligently here in the United States. And uh, we look forward to working with you more. Thank you for you sitting most down welcome. with me today. Taudi Sagi Basim Araba. Basim Araba Taluk. And uh, I hope to see you very soon in Kurdistan and in Ankara. Thank you. I hope so as Thank well. You. Thank you. In Beth Nahrin. Beth Nahrin, of, yes, course. of course. Thank you. Thank you.